You don't have to say too much about Sammy Davis. Everyone who's ever watched him knows uh, what a tremendous performer he is. He's a good friend also. And he'll be uh, working December the 7th, which is, what, the day after tomorrow? Mm -hmm. In San Diego, at the International Sports uh, Area, and on Sunday, December 9th, at the Community Center in Tucson, Arizona. He gets around, doesn't mm -hmm. he? And at the Mill Run Theater in Chicago on December 13th. Would you welcome, please, Sammy Davis. <laughs> Still of the night As I gaze through my window At the moon in its flight My thoughts all stray to you In the still of the night as I lay without slumber Oh, the times without number, darling When I say to you Do you love me as I love you? The chill I was with him last night. He is doing, along with Miss Carr, a yeoman's job at our hotel. He's yeah. breaking it up. That's good. I really mean it, man. The comments, because now that I'm an owner, you dig what I'm saying? That's what I hear. Yes. Yes. <sighs> My boss. <laughs> <laughs> he said to me last night, I got to tell you what he did. I'm sitting in the place, and I'm the vice president. For those of you nice folks who may not be aware of it, I happen to be legitimately licensed by the Nevada Gaming License Commission, which is, you've got to get a clean bill of health and all that jazz. Uh, but I'm very honored. I'm the first black man to ever be so honored. I have eight points at the Tropicana Hotel. And currently appearing at the Tropicana Hotel 
is Miss Vicki Carr and my man, and my brother, Mr. Ed McMahon. And they're breaking it up. So I'm sitting now, we're after the show, we're in the lounge, and Ed calls over one of the waitresses and says, it's a little warm in here. Tell him to turn it down a little bit. There's an energy crisis going on. And the woman said, yes, Mr. McMahon. I went, wait a minute, I'm a vice president. Don't you want to check with me? <laughs> she didn't even say nothing to me. She went and turned down the... It, and she went and turned it down, man. That was it. Now, you know he big. Yeah. <laughs> what she doesn't realize is that Ed carries his own warming energy with him all the time. <laughs> to him, Admiral Perry could turn the igloo down. What does he know why it's hot? Everybody else would be freezing to death. But I thought it was just wild because those people in Vegas, as you know, yeah. you know, if they don't really dig you the hell, they won't do nothing. They were all around him. Everybody digs him. Yeah, that's great. So I, I thank you. I thank you thank for you. Oh, thank you for doing you. great business along with Vicky, and I thank you for being the friend that you are. Thank and you, you do a good act. Thank you. You know, it's not just a lot of. Uh, stuff. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean to be rude, but that, that almost slipped out, and I didn't mean that. Yes, I did mean yes, it. I I didn't, you can't say it on television. But it, most people say, well, what is Ed McMahon going to do? You have to see him wherever he is, then you'll see what he does, because it's a good working act. I really mean that, man. Don't you have anything nice to say about me? <laughs> you work the other hotel, John. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me the other day uh, that Joanna saw Altabees and she said you weren't feeling well or something, or were you? I just, I just went through a thing that I really don't understand. I went up to Lake Tahoe to work at Harris, and I just got through doing the Follies, did the 13 Follies. I've been home every night, and as you know, there is not a lot of carousing around when you're at home and you... And your old lady's with you every day, you know. You have a few, on the weekend you go whoopee, you stay up till 2.30 and that's the end of it, you know. <laughs> but I went up to Tahoe, couldn't wait to get on. Two days in, the bug hit me. I was out for four days. I got up, the doctor said, you're okay. I went back in, worked three days, right on my knees again. For... I tell you, the straight life is killing me. <laughs> yeah, because you, uh, you have been known in your formative years. Uh, uh, you know, you've gone through a lot of lifestyles and changes yes, in your I life, have. right? No, actually, I haven't changed. Society has. Yeah. But you because were all the things that everybody's you going to be about, I was doing That's it what in I'm the old about. days. <laughs> and you but were also not as young, you see. That's it. You ever think of that? That's what the doctor told me. So I, I came back. When I left Does home, that come as a great shock? It always does to me when, some, when some doctor tells me that because I figure I, I feel as good as I did when I was 20 or 25. In fact, yeah. a lot of ways I feel better mentally and, and mentally. physically. And I'll go out and try to do something. And he says, what do you mean you played six sets of tennis? And I said, I'm a little tired. And he says, well, you played for what? I said, four hours. And he says, how old are you? And I says, I'm 48. And he says, well, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. And that all of a sudden comes as a great shock. The doctor told me, my doctor said to me, Jerry Blankford said, it's, it's an old, he says, I tell you what you got, Sam, it's called Too Many Candles on the Cake. <laughs> and I went, I, then I dug what he was saying, which means that there is a responsibility, and particularly guys like yourself, I think all three of us, and I'm sure many people in the audience and watching have done the same thing. You used up a lot of energy, man, from the time you were like 20 till you got to be 40. And now, it, some of that's got to get paid back somewhere along the line. You can't do it all. You remember the old days when you used to say, I'd like to stay up longer than you can? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you just stayed up five days looking at each other. Ah, I'm up, see there. It's like when you're in the service, you'd go out for three or four days, and you'd come back, and Monday, for whatever it was, a reveille, and you were just feeling great. That's it. Now you do it, it's in Mount Sinai for a week and a half. <laughs> in traction or something. Well, you know, I, I was... What's the longest you've ever stayed up? I don't know. I think four days I did it in Pittsburgh, and that's before I got into drugs, you know. I wasn't... You I went was, through that for a while. Oh, yeah. I, I was called a speed king at one time. Yeah. You know? And I couldn't deal with it. I, I, I admit it, based upon the fact that I, I went through trips and all kinds of things, and I just couldn't deal with it, man. I couldn't deal with it, which I don't think anybody can. This Not why I be, No, no. And, you know, somebody wants to smoke grass, that's their business. But I'm just talking about anything of any kind that messes up your mind, stops you from functioning as a human being, and whatever, whatever excuse you use, in other words, I'm doing this to hide what race I am, what my position is, 
I can't bear this. I'm on a tough schedule. Break. I gotta right. stay awake, all that. When you come down off your high, all them problems are still facing you, and you gotta deal with it. Right. You know, that's why I, I'm on the drug commission and all that jazz, because I just think it's dumb. It ain't nothing hip about it. And I think a lot of that... I hope we've seen, and some doctors seem to feel that maybe we've seen the, that, that kind of peak in the last few years and the kids are finally getting hip, you know, because it takes their own peer group to tell them. Adults can't go to kids and say, hey, get off of those uppers oh, no. or those downers or all those things. But the kids the same age can eventually get to them and say, as well, you I've said, seen, the problems I've seen are going to be there. Well, I've seen the turnaround since 69 to 73, now into four. And being on the Drug Commission out of Washington and all that jazz and talking to young people, they're doing more. And the, and the only thing that really gripes me now is that, and I'm talking about kids, I can't go into the ghetto and talk to my own young brothers and sisters. Because they don't want to listen to me. They don't want to listen to anyone that it, they consider jive or jam or, hey man, he's bourgeois, he don't know. Yeah. But when their own people who live and deal with the problem within the community doesn't, yeah then that's where it's heavy. And if you can deal with it on that level and help those young right. brothers and sisters, whether they be black or white, to do their thing within the community, that's where it's important. Because they don't need nobody coming. They don't want me to come into Watts or to Bedford Stuyvesant telling them, listen, and I'm sitting here with all these rings on going, I don't think you should deal in drugs, you know. <laughs> they, they don't want to hear that, man. They I wouldn't get, first of all, I don't think the car would get into the area. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate you could, that. You could turn off the air conditioning to show that you understand. You know, just, just as you go through and then turn it right on as you get out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're getting too old for but, that. No, no, wait a minute. But the important part is that what is your contribution going to be? What is yours going to be? What is mine going to be in terms of my commitment to my people? So you say, well, what I, what I believe in is this. How can I best help? And if a brother says to you, whether he, again, whether he be black or white, says, give me the money, let me explain it to him, where it came from. Don't you show up, because yeah. you're going to blow it by the time you sit there, because the two cats are already mad at the number you didn't <laughs> sing on the Tonight Show. <laughs> he can't win. Since he can't uh, win, so you say, that's the way it's got to be done. You know? All right, let me take a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, pool fans. I'm about to give you a lesson in the art of pool on this new Joe Namath pool table from Monroe. It's big and sturdy, and it has automatic ball return, and it's straight and true. So when you're shooting good, nothing's going to stop you. Monroe also makes this exciting Joe Namath day-night football game and Bobby Hull hockey, too. There you go, baby. 123 to 3. You want to rack them up again? Ah, uh, you're a pro. What am I going to do? But when it comes to sports games, Monroe is the pro. To Rip Caldwell, whose flight took off with the score tied. Big rush. He's in trouble. He's back to his own. United Airlines dedicates friendship service. On many of our cross country flights, Rip can hear top college and pro football games and the latest news. Another reason more people choose the friendly skies. Yeah! than any other airline in the land. The friendly skies of your land, United Airlines. Be alone a long time. Long time. Huh? It's Charlie Brown. <laughs> I, I forgot to mention one thing, that when I was talking about the trap, I'm very happy that I'm getting a lot of your family there, even though you're not coming. Ed's there now. And Doc comes in with Ann Margaret. It follows, uh... Follows Ed. Yeah. On, on the 12th. Oh, We're looking forward to you, sir, doctor. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's great. Bring your horn if you can. <laughs> uh, what do you what do you feel the mood? You feel the mood of doing anything? You want to, you want to chat? You want to sing? You want to dance? You want to... What do you want to... Want to laugh? You want to out? Whatever you want to do. I, I, would I, I would just like to say, can I say something before I go into the singing? Sure. <laughs> Same lady wanted to know when I was going to be off, I think. I, I just want to say that this, let's do, I, I do this out of respect for Maud, because... 
It was the nicest compliment the other night when she said, her daughter said to her, you understand, Ma, I gotta be me, I gotta be me. And Maud said, my God, you sound just like Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> so allow me, if you will, to do I Gotta Be Me. Yeah. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong whether I find a place in this world Or it never belong I gotta be me I gotta be me What else can I be but what I am? I want to live Not merely survive And I won't give up this dream of life that keeps me alive I gotta be me I gotta be me The dream that I see Makes me what I am That far away prize The world of success It's waiting for me If I'll heed the call Settle down Or settle for less As long as there's a chance That I can have it all I'll go it alone If that's how it must be I can't be right for somebody else If I'm not right for me I gotta be me And I gotta be free to try to do it or die I gotta be me And I'll go it alone If that's how it must be I can't be right for somebody else If I'm not right for me I gotta be free And I'm gonna be free Daring to try Do you, do we have time? I was almost in my dressing room when I heard the applause. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta put me, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta allow me the privilege that I haven't, I haven't worked for about two and a half, three weeks. And when I come to John's show, it's like visiting his home. And it's, uh, and the audiences are groovy. And I hope you nice folks at home who are watching do not think that I'm trying to take advantage. But the truth of the matter is I am. Can you give me this? Now, wait, wait, bass. Well, we didn't go do that. We just gonna have something. Give me this. Pick your own key and do it. Tie yellow ribbon round the old oak tree It's been three long years Do you still dig me? If I don't see no ribbon round the old oak tree Then I'll stay on the bus, forget about us Put the blame on me If I don't see a ribbon round the old, old oak tree Can take a sunrise, take a look at you, cover it for chocolate or a miracle or two, the candy man. 
the candy man can. Yeah, the candy man can, cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Well, the candy man makes everything he bakes satisfying and delicious. Talk about your childhood wishes. You can even eat the dishes. Uh. Yes, I do. Do you get the feeling through and through? Wow! Do you get the spirit in you? Yeah, yeah. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want to feel you say I got the spirit. Ha! That's great. That's great. <laughs> Those Thank you, Doc. Thanks to the gentleman in the orchestra. And of course, my man, George Rose. Thank you, Doc. We'll take a break. We're coming right back. Arnell Blend 100. It's a whole new kind of Arnell. Arnell Blend 100, an easy care fabric that feels like fine cotton. Arnell Blend 100, Medici does it in a lot of great prints. And you can never get enough of them. You got them all jazzed up tonight. Ah, oh, that's good that. jazz tonight. Yeah. I forgot to ask, where are you working New Year's? Are you gonna, are you working New Year's Eve? I'm doing, for the first time, I'm gonna do a thing here at the Century Plaza in Los Angeles on New Year's that's Eve because right. I've, I've got right. my kids. I'm gonna take them. Altavis and I are taking the kids down to Hawaii, vacation, and uh, then they come back and I'm going to do New Year's. 
See, usually I'm, I'm in Vegas, you know. Right. And I, I don't know how it happened this year, but they've got Wayne Newton. And Wayne has an army cot in the back of the hotel. Yes. Wayne lives there, you know. He does 30 weeks he a year. He says, Myron Kuhnsek, Wayne's here. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be here, and I'm going yeah. to do the show. Great. I hope it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. We've got some surprises coming in. I think the people will enjoy it. We have a new young comedian with us tonight, and I and uh, Louis is sitting in, Louis Belson with our orchestra tonight, and uh, we thought we might let the band cook for a while. You got something there? Uh... Yeah, we have a Louis Belson original composition entitled Space and Home. Space and Home? Right. Go. Right. Thank you, boys. We'll be back after this word. Now there's a line of top quality audio products priced for everyone from Superscope. Take it from a guy who really knows. Superscope Stereo is one fantastic stereo buy. It's from the same company that brings you famous Moran Stereo. Yet, it's priced for every budget-minded music lover. Discover the quality line of Superscope stereo and four-channel receivers, compacts, tape decks, and speaker systems. Really smart stereo shoppers don't give a toot 
for anything but Super Scope Stereo. One picture and a Super Scope cassette recorder can make it happen all over again. Fill your glasses with champagne. The love and happiness of years to come. Pictures just aren't enough. Get a budget price Super Scope cassette recorder with a built in condenser microphone today. And keep tomorrow forever. Hey, this has been a crazy night. Crazy night. Where are you working next? Uh, uh, you I'll got things? The Playboy Club in New York this Friday and Saturday. Right. And, uh,. Those are good clubs and uh, to try out things because you get a, a, a very good audience show. there and that, that's great and they're, they're very hip. Yeah. Will you come back? Uh, hey, I'd love to. Do our show again? Love to. You got the same audience? Same audience. Sure. Before we go to I have to apologize to Ms. Irma, Mrs. Irma Bombeck who uh, has a fascinating book. She's a, uh, because we, we ran a little long tonight and she will be back with us. Uh, she said she's going on tour right now. But she has a very funny book called I, uh, called I Lost Everything in the Postnatal de Depression. And uh, it's not fair to bring somebody out and just give them four or five minutes, especially when they have so many things to say as Miss Bombeck does. And she'll be back with us soon, though. Um, do we take a break here and then come back? All right. A one, a two, a three. Haven't we said goodnight before? We keep saying goodnight and we never leave. <laughs> this is a sham. We're going to go to 2 o'clock in the morning and people are waiting for sermonette. <laughs> uh, so you're going to be at Mill Run in Chicago, Sam, and when? Uh, the 13th? Yeah. Do and Mill, I do Mill Run. Uh, but San Diego before that, right? San Diego on, on Friday. Right. Which I, I kind of appreciate doing because I, I don't get a chance to work San Diego in Phoenix. I mean in Tucson. Right. Uh, but it would be good. People will come if they want to come. They'll see a good show. If they don't want to come, they'll stay home and watch Kojak or whatever. <laughs> they'll come, come and see a show. They'll come see a show. They'll have a good time. There will be no parading no, uh, <laughs> in the streets. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Sensational as usual. Thank you, Freddie, for being with us. Good night.